Welcome to part 5 of Let's Play Phantoms of Fear by Robin Waterfield. At the end of the last part, I was about to read paragraph 365. Here we go. Now, the river winds quite a lot, but at least it remains a river in your dream. Uh, you walk along the left bank. You have no idea of time. Uh, you could have been walking here for a minute or a year. Now, the surface of the water is occasionally broken by some monster. Nothing attacks you, but the general atmosphere is one of fear, of expecting something unpleasant to happen at any moment. Um, over to your left, you see a silver tower. Its architecture is weird and unfamiliar. It looks as though many rings have been placed one on top of another, with the largest at the base. Although the sky is overcast, the tower glints as if it were reflecting sunlight. There is something at the top of the tower, but you cannot see what it is. A weather vane, perhaps. Will you go over towards the uh, Will you go over towards the tower, turn to 266, or carry on along the river, turn to 192? Okay, we're going to carry on along the river and turn to 192. Um, I seem to have caught some sort of illness, um, so I might I might cough a few times in this video. My apologies for that, but uh, that's just how it is. Anyway, 192. But you are no longer on a river bank. You are about to enter a copse of weeping willows where strange fairy lights flickered and beckoned, but before you got there, the scene changed. You see the village of your home, but all is far from peaceful. Your family and friends have gone berserk and are rushing around, slashing at trees, animals and one, and one another. At first you are just watching this scene with mounting horror, but then you find yourself among your folk trying to restrain them. Uh, they turn on you and somehow all, all their bodies merge and form the head of a fearsome tiger. Uh, the arc of its sabre teeth has the same shape as its sluggish serpentine body. Will you fight the monster, turn to 40, or not, turn to 153? Okay, we're going to fight the monster and turn to 40. Okay, here we are. Tears well in your eyes as you raise as you raise your sword against the nightmare spawn monster which has taken over your village. As soon as you strike the first blow, the image changes and you see the peaceful village you left. Um, the, the peaceful village you left, where elves go about their daily business as if they had no cares in the world. Again, you are viewing the scene from above, not as part of it and the village recedes as if you were floating away. Gain one power point and turn to 231. Why is elves capitalised there? That's what confuses me. Anyway, power point puts us up to 16. Uh, and now we're turning to 231. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you find yourself back on the river bank among the willow trees. No, start again. You find yourself back on the river bank among the willow trees. The fairy lights still flicker on and off. Uh, still flicker on and off. You walk through the copse, but it becomes more than a copse. You lose sight of the river and are lost among dense undergrowth. A clinging, claustrophobic feeling clamps down on your chest. Now, the fairy lights have become baneful have become baneful yellow eyes glinting in the undergrowth. Your gaze is drawn to one pair of eyes in particular, and your eyes lock into these yellow ones. An unspoken voice seems to suggest quite calmly that you remain where you are. You feel inclined to obey. Will you give in to this inclination, turn to 371, or press on, turn to 60? Okay, um, we are going to give in to this inclination and turn to 371. <coughs> Excuse me. As you gaze into the eyes, you become hypnotized and seem to fall into them, or rather through them. For a while, you seem to float under a hot yellow sun. Then, as if you were an eagle in the sky, you look down on an awful scene. A strange people are camped in a fork between two shallow rivers. Their skin is coppery red in colour, and out of the tops of their tents stick the ends of the poles which form the frames of their tents. 
Some people with lighter skin are bearing down on them on horseback. Um, Sabres flash in the sun and magic sticks deal death from a distance. Uh, the image is brief, uh, but startlingly clear. You know that the red people will be massacred, and you know that scenes like this one have occurred and will occur again all over the surface of whatever world you are seeing. But that is all you have time to see and know uh, before you are sucked back through a vortex. Turn to 331. Okay, 331, here we go. You find yourself walking in a garden where all is peace and tranquility. After your recent experiences, you are at first suspicious of such surroundings. Will you explore the garden, turn to 139, or leave it, turn to 303? Okay, we're going to explore the garden and turn to 139. A stately woman, dressed in robes which constantly change colour, greets you in the garden. She smiles upon you, introduces herself as Galana, goddess of plants and fertility, and gives you a message. This garden may be the last haven you find, but you must persevere, even when all seems hopeless. There are two ways you may defeat Istra. Both require considerable power, but one also requires physical artefacts to channel your power. You decide. You try to ask her what she means, but she is gone. Add one luck and one power point and turn to 303. Okay, luck is already at maximum and power is now at 17 again. Okay. And we're turning to 303. Oh no, wait a minute, we're not turning to 303, sorry. Um, this is a hash uh, paragraph, therefore to return to the real world, we're going to add 50 to the paragraph, and so we're going to turn to 189. Sorry, I was just consulting my notes there. Um, your sudden appearance surprises the two orcs who were carelessly using their guard room to catch up on lost sleep. You strike one dead before he has fully woken up and turn to face the other. Orc guard, skill 7, stamina 6. For the first attack round only, the orc has skill 6 before, uh, because he is still groggy from his nap. If you win, turn to 91. Okay, skill 7, stamina 6. Orc guard. Skill 7, Stamina 6. My skill is still 11. And for the first attack round, his skill is uh, 6, isn't it? So, Okay, 6 plus 2 is 8. I get 21. So 8 to 21. Put some down to 4. Okay, now his skill is 7, so 7 plus 5 is 12, I get 20, so 12 to 20. Just uh, note that down just in case. Um, anyway, that puts him down to 2. Okay, 7 plus... 10 is 17, I get 13, that's 17 to 13, so he beats me. Puts me down to 17 stamina. Okay, 7 plus 8 is 15, I get 18, so 15 to 18. And a nought. There we go. That's the end of the orc guard. Let's remove any uh, uh, buzzing, should there be any. Right, let's carry on reading.
Um, my apologies, I keep pausing the, the recording and unpausing it to allow myself to cough. I don't want too many coughs being in this video. So if the mouse pointer moves around a bit or is a bit weird or the pages move and it's and the, the video is a little bit disjoint, it's because I'm pausing the, the recording to cough. So anyway, um, I do love being ill. Right. Uh, anyway, we're turning now to 92. Okay, uh, you look around the room. There is not much of interest. Weapons are stacked in one corner and hanging on the walls, but there are none which looks any better than your own. None takes singular. Um, apart from the weapons, the room is almost bare. Uh, the orcs were sleeping on chairs against the table. The table has only a wooden bowl on it. Now, the racks of weapons are numbered in good military fashion, and even the bowl has the number nine burned into it. Uh, you can take the bowl if you want. As you are leaving, you see a key hanging behind the door. You can take this too if you want. Will you lock the door behind you, turn to 63, or quickly make your way north, turn to 274? Okay, we're going to... And we're going to take the bowl with the number nine. So, bowl, uh, number nine, and we have a key. Okay, um, we are going to use the key uh, to lock the door behind us and turn to 63. You lock the door with the orc's bodies inside the room to prevent anyone easily seeing signs of your intrusion into this room, at any rate. Add one luck point, which I don't think I need. No. Uh, however, the key jams in the lock and you cannot take it with you. You then carry on north. Turn to 274. Okay, so we've used the key. So that, that was good. Okay, um, anyway, uh, you then carry on north, turn to 274. Uh, you arrive at a crossroads. Uh, the stone of the tunnels glistens damply in the torchlight. A main passage runs to right and left, and there is also a tunnel straight ahead. Uh, though it is narrow and unlit. Will you go left, turn to 288, right, turn to 112, or straight ahead, turn to 143? Okay, um, we are going to go left and turn to 288. Um, you are in a tunnel heading west. After a while, you come to a junction where there is an extremely solid looking door to your left. It has no keyhole and looks too tough to barge down, so you turn right. There is a smell of fear in the air. Turn to 188. Now, before long, the tunnel is met by another to the right, which is well lit and extends in a straight line as far as you can see. Now, the passage straight ahead, however, is narrow and dark and has a sign hanging from the roof which reads simply, Danger. It is a new sign and has obviously been put up by some of Istra's troops. Will you go straight ahead if you have not done so once before, 10 to 21, or right, 10 to 388? Okay, we are going to go straight ahead and turn to 21. You think that whatever Istra's troops find so dangerous might be of interest to you. Of course, it might also be equally dangerous to you. You walk slowly along the tunnel uh, to let your eyes get accustomed to the gloom. You have not gone far when, in the dim light from the tunnels behind you, you see a barred entrance to a cave. Uh, you notice it because you have just triggered some secret catch in the ground, which has opened the door in the bars. Immediately, the banshee which was imprisoned inside 
leaps th uh, imprisoned inside, leaps through the door. You are not misled by its resemblance to an ancient hag. Um, its claws alone tell you that this undead creature can fight, and it is uttering one of its notorious screams. Roll two dice. If the total is less than or equal to your skill, turn to 101. If it is greater than your skill, turn to 140. Okay, so our skill is 11, so we need this to be 11 or lower, uh, which it was. We've got a 7, so uh, that's that. Let's just remove any buzzing. Okay, so we're turning to 100 and... No, so not 101, so 102. It's a bit blurry there. 102. Uh, you manage to resist the petrifying wail of the banshee, and before it reaches you, you have your weapon ready to fight it. You are fortunate that its long imprisonment has made it a less formidable foe than others of its kind. It is weak, and although it continues to shriek, the screams have no effect on you. Banshee, skill 9, stamina 8. If you win, you could see if the banshee's cavern leads anywhere, turn to 195, or you could return to the junction and head east, turn to 388. Okay, banshee 9, 8. Need some more encounter boxes. Okay. Banshee nine eight. Okay. Sorry, I was just coughing there. Right. Um right, nine eight. My skill is eleven. Okay, so nine plus five is fourteen. I get 23, so 14 to 23. Puts, me down, uh, puts him to, her down to 6, sorry. Okay, 9 plus <coughs> 9 is 18. I get 19, so 18 to 19. That was close. It's weird, this illness. I don't have a blocked up nose. Just... Uh, I don't really feel that ill. It's just I have a really tickly throat, and it just and it's very difficult to stop coughing sometimes. Uh, I've had it since well, I've had it for well. I'm doing the video today, Monday, so I've had this since Wednesday or Thursday. -ish. It started to come on on Wednesday, and then I started coughing. Uh, started coughing a lot on Thursday, and then the coughing turned painful on Friday. Anyway. Um, Right, now we're doing this again. Um, 9 plus 10 is 19. I get 18. So 19 to 18. Puts me down to 15 stamina. Okay, 9 plus 8 is uh, 17. I get 17. So 17 apiece. Okay, 9 plus 4 is 13, I get 14, so 13 to 14, down to 2, okay, 9 plus 3 is uh, 12, <coughs> excuse me, and I get 23, so 12 to 23. That's the end of Mrs. Banshee, or Miss Banshee, or Mrs. Banshee. Anyway, let's uh, do that to remove any buzzing, should there be any. Um, anyway, now what are we doing? We are going to see if the Banshee's, ca um, see if the Banshee's cavern leads anywhere and turn to 195. Uh, you grope around the cavern. It is too dark for even a wood elf to see much. You find no exits from the cavern, but you do come across foul evidence that its captors uh, were feeding it, perhaps with their own troops. You also find the shattered, um, uh, the shattered remnants of furniture, as if in some past time this cavern had been used for a more civilized purpose. Among the broken and rotten among the broken and rotten wood, your hands make contact with something hard and spherical which you take, then you leave the cavern. 
You return to the junction. There is no one around for the moment, so you risk an inspection of what you found. Um, it is a crystal ball mounted on a black metal base. On the base are engraved runes which read, Ride the Winds of Time. There is also the number 30 engraved next to the runes. Will you risk looking in the ball now, 10 to 318, or will you put it in your pack and walk along the eastward passage? Center 388. Okay, so first of all, let's put that in our uh, in our um, on our adventure sheet. Ride the winds of time, crystal ball 30. Okay, um, crystal ball. Ride the winds of time 30, and then new line. And we are just going to put it in our pack and walk along the Eastwood Passage, turn to 388. 388, here we come. Uh, you walk boldly down the well-lit passage, trying to look as if you belonged here. You pass a narrow, dark tunnel on your right, but you think that this main passage must be leading somewhere important, so you carry on down it. You meet a couple of troglodytes, but have no difficulty in bluffing your way past these pea brains. After some time, the passage ends at a junction, where you could turn right, turn to 123, or left, turn to 310. Okay, we're going to turn right and turn to 123. You come to a set of imposing double doors. Beyond them, you can hear nothing except occasional grunts and snorts. Will you open the doors and step into the room, turn to 176, or turn around and walk back past the junction, turn to 310? Okay. We're going to open the doors and step into the room and turn to 176. Uh, yep, here we are. You find yourself yeah, you find yourself in a dining hall. Most of the tables are unoccupied, but it is the turn of a platoon of goblins to eat, and they are gobbling some vile mess at one of the tables. There is another set of doors opposite you, and a smaller door in the wall to your right. One of the goblins, the leader of the squad, uh, to judge by his size, gets up, wipes a hand across his greasy mouth, and demands to know your business. Since you are dressed as a dark elf, you decide to try a bluff. You could not hope to defeat a dozen goblins in battle. Will you say... Yeah, you could not hope to defeat a dozen goblins in battle. Would you say that you are on your way to the kitchen, turn to 299, or coming from the kitchen, turn to 30? We're, we're going to say that we're on our way to the kitchen. Um, so we're going to turn to 299. Uh, the goblin grunts. Huh, carry on and lets you pass. Will you head for the door on your right, turn to 330, or the one straight ahead, turn to 269? Okay, we're going to go straight ahead, and therefore turn to 269. You walk through the doors and find yourself in a passage which very obviously, because of the steamy smells, leads to the kitchen. Uh, you could wait a while in order to convince the goblins that you have visited the kitchen and then return to the dining and then return to the dining hall, turn to 379, or you could enter the kitchen through a door straight ahead of you, turn to 113. Okay, we're going to wait a while and return to the dining hall. And therefore turn to 379. Although the goblins give you curious looks, they do not suspect you or try to haunt you. In order to appear convincing, you leave the dining hall through the north door by which you uh, by which you entered. Add one luck point, which I assume I don't need. No. You return to the junction, and this time you carry on north. 
310. Okay, you find yourself in a corridor with numbered doors on either side of it. To your left are doors numbered 11, 11 33 and 55. To your right are doors numbered 22, 44 and 66. Uh, 66. Roll two dice until you roll a double and then try the appropriate door. So if you roll double one, try the door marked 11 and so on. To try a door, turn to the paragraph with the same number as that marked on the door. If you choose to ignore all the doors and walk on up the corridor, turn to 217. Okay, I have it on good authority that um, if we roll one and one, um, we go to well, we go to door eleven. If we go to door eleven, we lose a luck point. If we go, if we go to twenty two, we try another door. It just tells us to try another door. Uh, we want thirty three because we need some ice. Um, in forty four, um, we uh, you know uh, we roll dice for another room. In fifty five, we get some food that gives us four stamina. So that's good. Um, and 66 leads us to death, so we don't want 66. Um, so we want 33 or 55, preferably 33, really. Um, but yeah, there's an instant death here if you're not too... Well, you, if you're unlucky. Anyway, so let's roll two dice. Okay, that's... Um, no, that wasn't six and six. So we're looking at down here, aren't we? Okay, that was 55. We've got five and five there. So we're going to turn to paragraph 55. Uh, the door is not locked. You open it and find yourself in a larder. Uh, you can restore four stamina points by eating some of the food. Will do. Puts me up to 19 stamina. Um, then you can either try another door by rolling another double on the dice, or you can carry on up the passage, turn to 217. Okay, let's carry on rolling. Okay, so we want 43. No, no. Oh dear, we're dead. We've got 6 and 6. Oh dear, that's the end of the game. That's the second death. Another instant death there. I mean, you have just as much chance of getting 66 as you have of getting um, 33. So it's pretty unlucky, pretty unfair here. Let's carry on until we get 33. 44, well, let's go to 44 then. That's the second death. The door is locked. If you have a key, you could try it in the lock to the 280. Otherwise, you can roll dice for another room. To continue up the passage, turn to 217. Okay, so we need to keep doing this until we get 33. No, we're dead again. Um, and we're dead a third time. There we go, finally we get 33. So three deaths and we finally get 33. Brilliant. Right, that's four deaths in total. Okay, uh, the door is open. Although it is cool throughout Istra's underground kingdom, you are met with a blast of cold uh, as soon as you enter the room. This is the cook's freezer. The walls are solid ice and carcasses are hanging from rows of hooks. You can identify some of the carcasses but wish you couldn't. There is nothing here to interest you unless you want to take some ice. A fair-sized lump of this would keep for uh, would keep for quite a while, wrapped in a strip torn off your clothing. For some reason, the room number 33 sticks in your mind. Next, you can either try another door by rolling another another double on your dice, or you could walk on up the corridor, 10 to 217. Okay, so we need to take some ice and 33. Okay, and we're going to walk on up the corridor and turn to 217 now. Um, soon you reach a point where you could either turn left or carry straight on. You can hear the harsh laughter of some cruel being up ahead, but to the left you sense a feeling of terrible doom. This is not an easy decision to make. Will you turn left, turn to 73? Um, or carry straight on, turn to 156. Okay, we're going to turn left and turn to 73.
the further you go along this passage, the more you can sense great evil ahead. So you think you must be nearing your goal. You come to a cave where, though there is nothing to be seen, the aura is so oppressive that you cannot move. It is like an impenetrable suffocating blanket, but it writhes with an evil force, and nightmarish images form in your mind. You feel your power draining away as you struggle to break through, and then your lifeless body drops to the ground. Okay. Okay, so we're going to travel to the dream world, um, and therefore turn to 73 minus 20, which is 53. So we're going to 53. And here is where we are going to end the video. So, um, yeah, I should be able to complete this in the next video, I hope. So I'm on, I'll just note down I'm on paragraph 53, unread. Um, 53, unread, and we are in the dream world. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I uh, should be able to complete this in the next video. Thanks again, and goodbye.